Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can fold a really simple surface using the Crane plugin and create this. As you can see here, I can fold and unfold it and finally get that as a mesh like this. Okay, let's get started from scratch. To make this as simple as possible, I want to create two circles. So I'm going to use zero to create the first one. And the second one, these two circles are going to be the base of the surface. So I'm going to go to Params menu, use curve, put it on the canvas, right click and set multiple curves and select this. After selecting those two curves, we can simply go to the surface, uh, freeform and use loft to create a loft surface uh, from those two curves. Before I go forward, as you can see here, the surface seam is not right. So you can simply go to the loft option and select align sections and comma change so it's going to be straight and that's better let's go to the mesh utility and i'm going to use a, the tool called mesh surface this tool is going to be really simple to use and it's going to convert the surface into uv meshes which is really great i'm going to say from 3 to 14 and control c control v that give it to the uv division let's increase the number of v counts increasing it is going to give you more control over the shape so obviously we want more v divisions okay after creating that we need to use the crane plugin okay for the crane plugin i'm going to go to the solver and use this crane solver component and let's put this here and as you can see here, we need some C meshes to get started. This is the fold speed. You can give it a number between 0 to 1. Actually, it's going to increase or decrease the folding speed of the simulation. And uh, then we can start with the other inputs. The most important input is the C mesh or crane mesh, which is really simple. I'm going to go to the inputs. And the only thing I always use is the c mesh mv lines that means the mountain and valleys so i'm going to just use that give that to the c mesh and we are good to go we have to define the mesh the mountain lines and the valley lines uh, for the mesh this mesh is not suitable to give it here the reason is before you go to the uh, c mesh input you can see here we have this mesh with 114 vertices and 90 faces what we're going to do here is uh, you can decrease that with different methods one is going to the mesh utility and using this uh, weld mesh component and it's going to make it if i use the shift key to add it here you can see that it decreased 108 and 90 faces another thing you can always use is the uh, weld vertices I add it here you can see that's also going to work another tool you can use is the kangaroo plugin called combine and clean if i go here to the mesh utilities of kangaroo you can find it here combine and clean this is also a great tool if i add this here you can see it's going to be similar okay so it's going to the most important is the vertices i think that the faces sometimes the faces are multiple uh, so that's going to also decrease the vertices and faces for both of them. Uh, I prefer to use uh, one of these tools when uh, in different situations. If one doesn't work, I use another one. So here you can use anything you want. I'm going to say, okay, let's go with weld mesh, whatever. And we're going to give that to the C mesh MV lines inputs. For the mountains, we have to use this mesh. Uh, we have to for this tutorial i want to show you how easy it can be using the crane solver what i want to do is to say okay this line is going to go up and become a mountain and this line with a red is going to go down and become a valley okay and again it's going to be mountain so let's go to blue mountain valley mountain valley and as you can see here you can actually fold that simply by just defining the mountain and valley lines 
So that is the most important part. What I want to do here is to go to the Kangaroo plugin, use this warp weft component, and if I give it here to the output, and put this here, there are two outputs. A is the lines in the first direction, and B is in the second direction, okay? The problem here is that uh, if I want to define which one is going to go to the mountain and which one is going to be a valley. Okay, for these, the second series, what I want to do is to go to a curve and find the curve middle. This is important because we have to see if the points uh, of these lines are in the correct direction. I'll go to the display and check up the point list and bake this. Uh, as you can see here, we have 0, 1, 2, 3 goes till the end to 17. Then it goes to 18, 19, and till the end. This is really important because if I uh, use different belts, it's going to give you different results. For example, if I go to the Kangaroo plugin, the most important here is that if I use the mesh um, combine and clean, this one is going to ruin the numbers. So for example, if I give it to here, and bake that. It's going to be something like this. Zero, one, then it jumps here two, then jumps three, four, and that's uh, the most worst thing you can experience, especially if you ruin the numbers of the edges. So we are good to go with the weld mesh in this tutorial. Okay, after creating the numbers and also you can use the display this one point order if you want to it's going to show you the order of the numbers that's also a good way of seeing if they are in correct order for example if i uh, use the combine and clean you can see that it's going to ruin the numbers here okay so be sure to check it out and now what we want to do is to select them uh, in that direction. Okay, if I bake the numbers, you can see that the number starts with 0 and goes to 17, which means 18 uh, lights. Uh, what we need here is go to sets, list, and use this partition list. And say, okay, I want to make these lines into a partition list. Uh, how many is the size? It's 18. I think it's probably this number. So I'm going to give that to the inputs. And now we have them here. If you want to see them again, let's check that out. Extract the center. If you want to see the order, it's completely correct. If you want to see the numbers, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, till the 8, till the 18, okay? So that's okay. I'm going to delete that. And now we have this uh, correct order. Because we want these lines, we can go to the sets tree and use this flip matrix to change the direction of the data. So for example, we have five groups of 18. Now we need 18 groups of five because one, two, three, four, five is going to be joined together. So I just flip the matrix, and now if I turn that point order on, you can see that's the correct direction. So now we can just simply bring those lines out and join them together. Okay, by joining them, we, we also can flatten this. If I bake it, you can see that's creating that line. This is important because we want to put them into two groups of mountain and valley, so we have to join them together. Okay, let's see if the order is correct. Again, we can just simply place the point order. The order is correct. So what we want to do is to say dispatch, set, list, dispatch. We can search for dispatch too. Dispatch those lines. Uh, the default is true-false, so it's going to make it true, something like this. True-false, true-false, until the end. Okay? 
I put that here and that is the group B. Okay. Uh, another thing important here is that the number of division is also really important. So if I put this to 15, as you can see here, this is going to make two of that beside each other. So I'm going to put that to an even number and that is going to fix the problem. So remember that has to be even. And we are good to go. Uh, because we have to give lines... Each of these segments has to be defined. I'm going to use the curve explode. Explode those segments. I think that they are in groups, as you can see here. We flatten that. And if you don't know about flatten or graft, I'm going to put it up here. Just check it out. And these are going to go for the mountains, and this is for the valleys. That's all you have to do to get the folding. Uh, before we go forward for the crane, I have to go for preview, preview C-Mesh, so I can see it, turn everything off. And also deconstruct C-Mesh, so we have the mesh as an output. Okay, these two are going to be enough. Before we go forward, put the solver to on, rigid mode to on, and quad flat has to be off, because if I put it to on, you can see that if I reset the simulation and start to fold it, it can't fold, because it's trying to make this these uh, quads to flat parts, but it can't fold it, as you can see here. Okay? So I put this to off, reset, and put this to the test, uh, we can also turn off the mesh. And that's it. That's how you can do it. Remember that if you want to make this bigger, you have to reset the simulation and then fold it. And when you fold it, you can also unfold it too, which is really cool. Uh, let's see if we can make this a little bit different and see if it works. As you can see here, it has to be perfect circles. So that is the only way we can fold that. That is how we can get the results. This is the speed of folding. So it's faster. Smaller numbers are going to make it slower. And we have it as a result. And that's it. I'm going to internalize these two circles. So you can download this example file from our website. Also, another thing here is about the flatting, uh, quad flat thing. I thought that if it's um, going to the constraint and put this to flat foldable, give that as a constraint. This, this is the constraint wing. Let's reset that and fold it. It's going to fold it. Remember that quad flat on will ruin it, so I can fold it now. But when I go to the Kangaroo plugin, there's a mesh planarity analyzers. I'm going to give that here and turn this off. As you can see here, it's not planar because as you can see here, we have lots of deviations. It's not flat. If I go and zoom in here, it's a little bit curvish and also not flat faces. So this is not going to work. I try that. But if, uh, as you can see here, when it's not folded, it's completely green. And as you can see here, it's also saying that, yes. As you can see here, it says green is planar and red is not. So when it's uh, straight, obviously it's flat. And when we start to fold it, it's, it's going to come into non-planar. Okay. So that is going to be a challenge for premium members. If you want to just join us, uh, you can join the premium. And we're going to talk about how we can make this flat. Also, there are some challenges, especially that um, this curve, this line here, is not line anymore. For example, if I make this, this start, connect this, these two points together, it's going to make a line. And it's going to be some deviation. So we're going to fix that in the premium uh, tutorial if you want to. 
Uh, if you want to know where you can download that, you can simply head to uh, where you download this example file and join the premium and download the premium tutorial and example file to get the actually planarity analyzers. Okay, so that's it. That's how you can create that uh, folding mechanism using Crane plugin. I think Crane is really cool because it's simple. You just have to define the mesh. Remember that you have you shouldn't have any duplicate vertices or faces, and just define the mountain and valleys is going to fold it. That's easy. And also there are lots of things that you can do with crane constraints and other things that I think that's going to be cool. Again, that we have several tutorials uh, on our websites. If you search for crane, you can check that out. For example, on our website, if you search for crane, you can see that we have different example files and tutorials. Uh, some of them are free, some of them are for premium, and you can join here by selecting the premium. Okay, I hope this tutorial was useful. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye.